Hey everybody, we're back out here on the Elkhorn. This is that free camper we got. We are now working on this side of it. Kara has removed this cover off of it. They did a hell of a nasty job. Um, that's a new refrigerator they put in this 99 model camper. And we're going to be pulling this out too. Now that's the propane door in there and it uses one of these horizontal tanks. You see it's got the brackets on it. One of the things I've got is I've got the heater removed. So there's the heater unit. And this is what I'm firing it up on. I want you to look carefully. Now, everything I use, look under the video. I'll put a link to them. So all of these parts you see out here, I'll, I'll show you where you can get them at. Because this is the handiest little item. I did a video like two years ago on this. And people were like, wow, they didn't even know it existed. So you'll have like a regular, right now this is a two-stage, but you can have a regular barbecue pit style regulator on here. And I'll put you a link to the the uh, the simple ones, but I like the two-stage ones because they, uh, they, they stay more balanced. But you look in here, and there's this fitting. This fitting here, the way that it works is that you will thread it into this, into your regulator, and then screw your bottle into this. Never put your bottle into that first because it's a straight shot through. See if you can see that in there? You can see through it. <laughs> so don't do it. Um, this is just your standard adapter. And so you can adapt the, the different types of propane bottles. This is to refill these bottles. So you'll take a regular propane bottle, you know, like a barbecue pit bottle, 20 pounder, and you'll thread this in Put your tank on and then flip the bottle upside down and reach under and open the valve and you just don't flip out because it doesn't do it quickly it takes about seven to eight minutes and it'll allow it to balance out and fill these little tanks now i save these little tanks for this reason one i can put this adapter on inside that rv i can put it on in the rv and run everything in that rv for probably you know uh, an overnight trip it'll actually do a good job of it unless i bake or something but what we're doing here today is we're going to test this old heater out now this is also a 99 model heater we've cleaned everything out this was just plumb full of wasp so it was a lot of work you can see the dirt dauber where they had is dirt daubers i guess you call them and paper wasp both were packed i think we estimated about fifty thousand wasp were at one time in that RV right there. Man, so I got it for free. <laughs> so I'm willing to do a little work. I mean, it's in premium condition other than a few bugs. Now, this bottle here being used, it's hooked up and piped in uh, the same standard 3 8 Now, you guys, if y'all have never seen these before, I will put a link to that. These are about 10 bucks, but man, they're worth their weight in gold. If you have a situation where you need to... Uh, go out like that that 90 degree and it has a free floating nut on it for a flare fitting it is amazing how well that works to pipe things up and of course you want to make sure you get caps because once you start to recycle refill these they will occasionally leak and the reason they do that is because the speed of the fluid going in and out of them can cause the rubber to deteriorate a little bit uh, on the piston seal or the schrader seal that's in there it's a little looks like a little rod and it'll deteriorate a little bit get one of them caps and just put them on firmly they won't leak down so given that now the way that you typically test one of these rv heaters that's like this you know with the computerized board in them is you'll hook them up to power and then their thermostat wire is nothing but a connection so when you touch the wires together like flipping on a switch the same thing the thermostat does you will get power back to the board and it'll call for heat so i'm just going to clip them two together and it's got about a i don't know 10 second delay so we'll get uh we'll get our little gun here ready and let it fire up so it's a few seconds before it does so there it goes it's just now hit And then it's going to exhaust its fumes. And sometimes when you first hook these up, 
you might have to cycle this two or three times to get them to do it because they won't light if there's not you know gas going in there that thing right in here will just time it a few times and if it don't act it means there wasn't no gas there was air still in the line here so you might have to cycle it a few times to test these now it's fired up and burning let's get a little reading here that just started so in here in the shop we've got uh, 74 degrees so get over here and we'll see the temperature start to come up fairly quick And before you work on these RV heaters, you want to be sure and certain that they do work like they should. And I take them completely out. I do not try to test these in an RV. And the reason being is like when I remove these plates to get into the heat exchanger full of wasp. You, you won't see that until you take it apart. So now the typical rundown, I don't know if you heard that. But the flame immediately stops when you disconnect this and then it has a temperature sensor in here right let's see if i can get in there to see it right there point my finger at it that it allows the cool down cycle and the board will then sense the cool down cycle is over with and shut itself off pretty simple setup so how do you like that that's not too bad is it I like that little setup so I use it quite a bit and these are only about eight eight to ten dollars a piece for these you get a four pack of these or six pack for ten dollars this is about eight bucks um, and then your refiller is about six seven dollars and be sure your your o-rings don't get damaged on those but they do you a lot of justice when you're working with anything from barbecue pits I mean we we went out and literally used one of these on a barbecue pit and I think we were out there for about four hours cooking and when it finally quit. But that's a lot easier to carry around than a big ass tank. So I keep a dozen of those handy. There you go, guys. Testing an RV heater, some of the parts and fittings you might want and very easy to use. Y'all stay tuned. We're gonna get that old LG air conditioner, very low wattage AC unit installed up in here in that window. And I've got to put spacers in out here to bring this out so that it not only clears it, but protects, protects the uh, air conditioner from being hit. And we're still in the process putting things back in. Oh, and I replaced even more parts on that box when I powered it up. It couldn't handle the charging for the battery down there, but we're working on it one step at a time, guys. Look, wind is done. Working on the last two over there. All right, jump again. Thank you.